Hello, good morning. It's so intimidating to be uh, following the speakers with the have accents and what I have is actually the Visaya accent. So I say hello to those who are from Mindanao, the Visayas, my own country, and my own I came here smiling because uh, today they just confirmed to the casualty. Uh, it was Typhoon that hit the country, Typhoon Louise. Left us with uh, zero, and uh, they spotted another low pressure area. And if it will become a typhoon, they'll call it Mario. I hope that it become a super Mario. So, my title today. <laughs> uh, so, my title today is really a, a lot of people already know about climate change. So, I kind of twist it a little bit and make it a climate of change for safer 2030 and beyond. But I truly believe that if you want to address climate change, we need to have the climate of change and human and public in the way we do things if we want to address the challenges that climate change poses to us. So, let me explain a little bit. You know, we're warming, it's unequivocal. 95% of mainstream scientists agree that since the 1950s, there's a very strong correlation between the increase of greenhouse gases and warming. We're now about 0.85 degrees already, and that, that correlation is so strong, and instead of it's really human beings. So what do we do if it's human beings? Um, according to one of our noted economists, I saw this from one of his reports, he said that, you know, there's already an economic impact, very strong one, strong evidence to show that if you reach one degree, two degrees, three degrees, you can see it all over here. But in the Philippines, we were introduced to climate change only on an extreme extreme weather, mostly typhoons, right over here. But it cuts across sectors, food, water, ecosystems. And this is something we don't know much about, like drought. That's why we need to invest for our future if we want to avoid a tipping point of species. So when we do predict, oh, the world will have to do something it's a global problem. It's a global challenge. It's a global cause. Maybe I should have a clicker. <laughs> have a clicker right there. It's a global cause. It's plant the seed now. It's a global cause. Right over there. Have a way of that. Just like your technology. There is no planet B. Oh, I love my only Earth, the only Earth that we know. So we have to go to that. So, so we did. Before the early 1990s, there's already science that shows that there's an increased accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And then, at the time, about 196 countries signed on to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. 1992 is like 22 years ago. And yet, we didn't see much changes in the way we were supposed to address the very main challenge that brought us today. What 196 countries signed, including the United States. But the problem, not really a problem, is that that treaty may have been signed with 196 countries, recognize the principle of common and differentiated responsibility, recognize the principle of equity, which means that developed countries or those who have a capacity, capacity to do so should lead, and that developing countries to where the Philippines belong can join only voluntarily. That treaty, however, is not legally binding. It, however, created a framework for a negotiating principle and uh, come up with treaties or agreements called protocols. So in 1997, you kind of get a protocol, and probably that's what you've been hearing you know, all this time. The Kyoto Protocol remains to be the only legally binding protocol on the climate change reduced greenhouse gas. But where are we today? And I would like to show you a little bit of attention on this video. Is 
developing countries, including China and India. United States. Wait a minute. China and India, very economically, now they say. You can. Excuse me. Saudi Arabia. Malaysia, no love left for the American. Thank you to whoever did this video. Made my life simpler. That's where we are today, actually. That's why Secretary Ban Ki Moon is so many. That's not the right word. I have to work with you to be there next week, in which I will follow the advanced part of the president in the next few days. Because we need to show some leadership globally. Otherwise, the whole multilateral process might no longer be effective. We already failed in 2009 in Copenhagen, and I want to avoid that. So, this is the latest carbon dioxide emission, at least on carbon dioxide. China is now number one, has overtaken the United States, and India is number three. And the Philippines is a sweet little box of red. But nonetheless, compared to global emissions, even if we're not a major emitter, because we're also growing economically, our emissions is growing as well. We're now looking at strategies to move ahead on our economic development that will do us or lead us to a low, low emission development strategy. But it remains to be a challenge because technology that will help us reduce our greenhouse gas remains to be expensive. Oops, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm sorry. So anyway, so this is what the discussion um, okay, where are we supposed to? Oh, there we are. Oh, that's not Makulai Kalkin. <laughs> that's the old lady. <laughs> not our actor from the home alone. Um, since it says that the atmosphere it will stay about 50 years. So, what we can really do at this stage is not actually. But nonetheless, we were very proactive in our policies. Prior to the Philippine Development Plan, or the previous administration, the only mention of climate change was in the area of mitigation of greenhouse gas. It doesn't make sense because we're not a major emitter. So when we passed the law in 2009, the Climate Change Act, we purposely intentionally pushed the national budget to focus on adaptation strategies. But nonetheless, in 2008, we passed the Renewable Energy Act to provide incentives to allow us to transition to new technologies using solar, uh, wind, as another alternative to our uh, electricity exposure. We've seen an increase in our budget 26, 26 times more, faster or bigger, than the national budget itself, only at 6%. And we're still, we also see increase with yellow thing, uh, yellow graph over there, color over there, on our mitigation action. But even if we are not mandated to do so, we're trying to do our best in contributing to the problem. We passed various laws, and we have the People's Survival Fund uh, created in 2012, amending RA 2009. We need to provide support for local government, communities, and governments, and to show that our local governments are really front liners in addressing climate change. Because what's applicable in Manila is not necessarily the same in Surigao from where I grew up and from where I'm from. Same thing in our body. So what are we doing now? Let's start with cities. There are growing studies to show that those who are living in the cities are actually most vulnerable. We've seen strong surges and how it impacted us last year in Yolanda, Tacloban being the capital of the region. Heat waves will become more intense because of our urban heat. Let's just be people still. Manila is the second most vulnerable climate, climate change, next to Dhaka, Manila. 
based on a maple cow, had been released in 2013. So, what do we do now? This is the actual picture after Stendhal. Uh, that hit us uh, in the part of the world and Illinois. This is a village in Illinois City, a highly urbanized city in northern Illinois. I believe if tools were made available to them before, they would not have allowed this kind of development. Most of those who lost their lives came from this town. And if you look at the way they were built, they are not illegal settlements. They are legitimate developments allowed by the local government. So, after that, we got a support from Australian Aid and UNDP under the project planning between two. We pushed for the approval of the supplemental guidelines and all comprehensive land use plans to which the HLURB or the Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board, chaired by Vice President Jerry Warbinai, approved this year. This now requires all local governments to maintain the key tools in their local planning, otherwise, they will be and they can be held accountable under the Disaster Risk Management Act that those who don't follow this can be perpetually disqualified from office. Now I'm giving you the tip. And to show that this is a political, Secretary Mayroha just last week signed the Joint Memorandum Circular together with DGM, the Department of Budget and Management and the Climate Change Commission, to require local governments to set aside budget for climate change and to address that supplemental guideline requirement. And on top of that, we have the national government expenditure tagging as well, wherein we were able to increase our budget from a mid-to-1 billion before 2010 to almost close to 12 to 13 billion for this year. And finally, under the People's Survival Fund Board, we have an approved program budget for 2015 and 1 billion. Not much, but it's a good start. So where are we heading now in your national government? We have recognized that climate change and disruptiveness are close to reality. We cannot be separated. And we've seen that in the past. That's why we try to look for partnerships such as that with Project Argos. I take that as a pressure from Maria and I to finally push this initiative together. I will now announce the support that we got from Australian Aid to put more pressure on us to work on this as fast as we can. We also develop under the project an app that's for free, wherein we will now determine our exposed population. Imagine we never had this before. That's why when we do evacuation, one area, let go, all of you. This is losing credibility among our people. Because the tendency is to want to take everybody out and then nothing happens. What happened? And the next year, the next year, every time it happens, someone will listen. So we want to be more targeted. And this is an app which will allow us to do and gather data. This is GeoTab. And we're looking for volunteers to survey us. We're scaling it up, and the president approved this already. It's an instrument to gather data. Who are those who expose the risk? Where are the buildings? What kind of buildings? What, are the, what kind of materials will be used? Maybe there's a need to push for more new ordinances that will allow the local government to enhance the kind of materials that will be sold. This will now be a lot of opportunity for new businesses to try to push for more quality products. And this is a sample of the resource. Now, more than ever, we know most of our, well, women are located and our male are located. As you can see, well, as maraming babaya sa pagkalalaka. And then, we know also the number of households, building, production area, where they live, on what are the hazards they're exposed to, so that we can suggest maybe there's a need for them to stay. And this is the most interesting. Of course, mass media is the main source of knowledge in the local community, next to, Robert, uh, to others or not. I don't know what it is. I will have to check with my staff what exactly what that means. And then this is interesting. In Iliga, which is an industrialized city with a lot of manufacturing, Low vision is number one type of disability and loss of hearing. So imagine if you tell them, Uy, at least and they just reply with a smile. So you know what that means. 
we don't know and we don't have any one early warning system that pieces to this possibility. And we need to be conscious and that's why we need to be How do we change and how do we move forward? It's really the way we use our lives. We need to be able to change the way we plan for the future. However, the time begins, it will prohibit future development, controversial, in areas that are declared no, no go zone, you still you see people building houses. We need to be very targeted in running our people. And we have to have this new technology and tools to help us lessen that uncertainty. This is an example of a town that we've helped. This is their land use map. President asked me what does it mean? I said, Mr. President, that's exactly the same question to ask. It's in black and white. It's the fourth fifth class municipality, and yet they identified industrial zone, and yet this was accepted as the basis for their language. So what did we do? We came back. We used GIS mapping, and now they have this school. Now they realize that their production area is far away from their population, increasing the cost of transportation and cost of goods. By the simple map alone, they were hit by the land as well. We finished this before Yolanda, zero casualty of Yolanda, and they were hit by the next five typhoons after Yolanda, all zero casualty by a simple mass such as this. So this is the National Climate Change Action Plan. We were bold enough in the Climate Change to Commission to make it long term, to allow the current government to choose and decipher which way we can do now, the next administration, and the next administration after the next. But our ultimate outcome is to improve the capacity, but at the same time, how do we transition to climate smart technologies, take advantage of the opportunities of climate, and bring in these new technologies to help us the future. We don't have this little company, the painted light campaign, a simple way of actually improving your indoor temperature. We got a support a partnership of one of the biggest manufacturers in the country, and I tied it together with a new president, uh, system president, who uh, we did this in UPG. Simple, and you see every time I go around here on the highway, I see roofs that are colored blue and green, they're actually the worst color to And then we have another problem. And, uh, <laughs> that's me over there, and this is the seventh time I went up my roof. I have my roof changed. And last year, under the Renewable Energy Act, an incentive of net metering. I applied and then I connected to the grid in Morocco. I used this. I'm now a net exporter, which means that they will pay me for the power that I produce for my solar through offsetting on my monthly bill. It's relatively inexpensive technology, but I have to start from somewhere. And another incentive I get a visit for the cheapest guy on television. I really have to do something about the bubble, good no. We went there, he was gracious enough to accept our invitation to their climate change ambassador. After he featured this and previous of petrol, we had a lot of inquiries in the commission. All this information, which we could get it from a cute sky and TV, good for us. And I think another tip, in, uh, short one, hopefully, so we'll be. So there's really a lot of possibilities, a lot of opportunities in It doesn't have to be one car, one person. We don't see a habit. Bicycles, but then LIMRT is a different story. Not quite a bicycle. We are used to this, yes, but we can consider it. I will see now that here, you have new technology to listen to. New ideas. Support technology that will allow us to improve our energy usage. Thank you. And thank you to WWS and Mark Nelson, I understand it's one of them. That's it. I was told to finish my slide, and this is my last two slides. Just to show you 
that what good governance can do. Here, of course, Yolanda is not part of the chart. This is off the chart. Prior to Yolanda, this are the most, you know, in terms of wind and in terms of rainfall. But if you look at the most disastrous in terms of death, not among here, is over here. And not among here, is over here. This shows that when you get strong, you will be hurt. Typhoon Ita was number four before you landed, and I survived that. I was there in high school. I lost friends. I lost family members, and it was that memory that allowed me to be very passionate in my job today. So I say this, as a survivor, I refuse to be remembered by how much suffering I endured, but how well I recovered. So we pursue partnerships, just like, ooh, this is what technology can do to you. This is the partnership that I had with my good friend, Michael Pressman. Before he was popular, and now I can't find him anywhere. And this is, uh, yeah, I like it. It's real. We painted over my head. Partnership with Facebook here. And, uh, thanks to give them. So, this last video, this is what we did with this partnership. This is the Oh, yeah. In the of 2015, by Team Haya, locally known as Uganda, made landfall to draw a cover in the Philippines. With the strongest storm in the city, this is the toughest of the Filipino state. We were overwhelmed when the whole world united and came to our aid, showing the true meaning of love and generosity. Thank you. From Even if they lost their home and now live in a tent, their children are determined to continue their education. The families from the Pacific are working together to clean up the coast and sea to make it a renowned island destination of the West World. The families of the Yakai are now trying the restoration of the 300 year old model that protected them from the storm's reach during the land. Their survival shows that when we take care of the environment, it cannot get above. In Korean Palawan, the entire family's business was affected by the storm, and yet they still have over 160 families through tourism. We may not be able to bring the memories back, but we can make new. New history, new story, new memories. <laughs> Being able to capture these moments, the smiles, it is priceless. Pictures to show them how we see them. An inspiration. <laughs> The airspace of climate change, disasters, calamities, but it also faces hope, strength, and resilience. There's still a lot of work to be done. Everyone has a role to play. Be an Earth advocate. As a survivor, I'm a living testament that we can survive. But if we go together and do this together, there's nothing we can overcome. And that if you refuse to be defeated by tests, 
we can truly write about the Arthur's legacy. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much, Professor.